Hello, we are gonna start today's video with installing this rear subframe onto the car. My goal is to make the Nissan Gloria a roller today. In the last video, we left off with fully welding on the passenger side quarter panel, making sure the door latch works. We applied epoxy on all the bare metal and we seam sealed all of the seams. Turned out pretty good. We only have a couple days to get this car out of here and I still have not received the driver's side quarter panel, which is unfortunate because I'm missing a whole bunch of quarter panel on this side. <laughs> but either way, the car will still be able to roll and get out of the way. Before I throw in the Y32 Gloria subframe, I wanted to see if an S13 subframe will fit this car. That could be some beneficial knowledge for whatever this project holds in the future. Let's see if we got any laying around. It looks like we have three to choose from. Probably take this one because it's most bare, so it'll be the lightest. You can tell this is an S13 subframe because there's no bushings in the back of it. It's just solid mounted. So I've butted the S13 to the back end of the Gloria subframe. I've lined up these two points here and you can see that the Gloria side goes out farther. The Gloria subframe also utilizes the bushings to hold in the diff. They do look pretty similar, but they are quite different. I'm wondering if an S14 subframe is more comparable to the Gloria subframe. Well, I guess we can start sliding this in there. I guess I'll just try and jack this up and catch two studs in the back. Oh no, that's gonna tip over. I put a jack on the front to help the tilt. This is lining up a lot better that way. We got our first stud started. We'll just have to keep jacking it up evenly. Looks like this one's lining up. Nice, there we go. Put on these subframe mounts, actually. I think it goes this way. Subframe is in. Let's take out the jack for now. Now we have to connect the drive shaft, the e-brake cables, and the brake calipers. Pretty sure the caliper is supposed to go under. Yeah, that makes way more sense that way. Pop out our slide pins. Such a weird setup. That one's on the top. The bigger one's on the bottom. Slide our caliper back on. Let's take a look under the car. Interesting little cross brace here. <laughs> All right, e-brake cables. These go here. Actually, I think it's easier to attach the rod end before you actually bolt it in. I'm gonna take off the nut first. This blue clip will attach here, but this metal end, we gotta slide into this bracket. Thankfully, I left all the drive shaft hardware on the drive shaft, so I don't gotta go looking for it. When you reinstall the drive shaft, you wanna make sure you line up your marks because these are usually balanced to the drive line. That's why there's a yellow mark on the diff input shaft and then the yoke on the drive shaft. It's also important to mark those before you take off the drive shaft. I think the next thing we should do is grab the exhaust and mount that up. Now, which exhaust was it? Uh, pretty sure it had an oval tip on it. Probably this guy. Look at that. OEM Nissan, baby. Before I go struggling to mount this thing, I'm just trying to make sure I have all of the exhaust hangers. So for this one, we ended up cutting it off because there was no access to getting it off of the chassis because it was so folded in. But luckily, the new rear clip had an exhaust mount on it already. Now I'm looking at this side and I don't see a hanger or anything over here, but I am noticing three threaded holes. So let's go look at the rear clip that we took off of the car and see if there's supposed to be a hanger on it. Yeah, look at that. It's a good thing I still have this piece, right? Looks like 14 millimeters. No, they're 12 mils. So 
Now this piece was facing like so. I just realized there's actually an arrow on here too, pointing to the front. So nice not having to look for hardware. Just put it right back where it's supposed to go. I'm gonna start with jacking up the rear of the muffler, the exhaust system here, and just mount the whole exhaust system on these rear two hangers. And then I'll jack it up from the front. And then I can connect the mid pipe to, I think there's a cat on this car. It's a pretty cool feature that you can just slide these out of here. Usually they're a pain to get off. I really like this nut method. All right, let's move the jack to the front. It is taking everything in me not to remove this ginormous weight. This is just one of those cars that you want to drive smooth and weights like these help reduce the noise of the drive line. Now I'll just attach the rest of the hangers. That should be the easy part. At this point, everything under the car is completed. The only thing really left to make this thing run again is to install the gas tank, which is gonna be a pain to do. This thing, <laughs> is unfortunately still full of fuel. I recently filled up before I started the repairs. I don't know why I filled it up all the way. Looking back, I probably only should have put like two or three gallons in it. And it's also a massive tank. I think it holds like 18 gallons. So we gotta try and lift it up and it actually goes in here. Pretty wild. Now from the factory, they had sound deadening placed all along here. And that's what the fuel tank sat on. Even on these ridges here, it just sat on sound deadening, which I thought was kind of interesting. I have not ordered my sound deadening yet, so I might just put a towel down there for now. This one looks like the perfect candidate. Because again, we have like two days to get this car out of here. We just need to make it a running and driving vehicle. These are the fuel tank straps. I'll probably put these on first because if we put the fuel tank in first, we won't have access to fully seat these studs. They go all the way in the back there. And I'm not sure if these are a different length or not, but I did notice a marking on here. One says ML, one says MR. Hopefully that means left and right. These go in here. Okay, so they sink down and then pull up. Very strange. Try and get these tucked out of the way. Oh. All right, these straps are definitely on the wrong sides. This one's too long and this one's too short. So I guess the MR, ML didn't really mean much. Now that's gonna be really difficult to get out. Oh, I got it. It's probably gonna be more difficult to install, let's be honest. Well, that took way longer than I'd like to admit, but finally got them lined up. Now we just got to install the lines. Looks like we have a vent line up here, and then feed and return. Please forgive me, I don't have my line wrenches. All right. Oh, I forgot we don't have any wiring back here. We have to find all the wiring that is tucked inside the car and route that back through these holes. There's one on each side too. Yeah, there's the other hole right there. I still am not sure what this tube is for. This is where our sub harness attaches. I'm not sure what this plug is for. I guess we'll find that out. And I just realized that the sub harness that was already attached to this blue half cut is actually snipped where the tail lights connect. I was like, where's the plug for the tail light? Snipped. Other side, snipped. It's a good thing we kept the other one. The gift that keeps on giving. We should have enough wires connected to at least get this thing running. But I just remembered we forgot to install the coilovers back onto the car. So let's do that real quick. Luckily, these are pretty easy to do. 
and I left the hardware on top so I don't need to go searching for it. Got the bolt still on the knuckle. I like to start the nuts on top. That way they're hanging. I don't tighten them all the way. That way I have enough wiggle room to install it. Then I'll jack up the knuckle. I also like to tighten this while there's tension on the knuckle. Especially because this is a rubber bushing and if you tighten it at full droop, that could prematurely cause that bushing to fail. At this point, we are finally ready to mount some wheels onto the car. I don't know if these are gonna clear. Sometimes on these 90s Japanese Nissans, the coilovers can be a little too close, but this spec specifically fits the S13. So I feel like it would fit the Gloria no problem. Oh yeah. That fits no problem. This car came with spline drive sockets, which I hate using. Definitely gonna have to order some Nismo lugs for this car. Clearance check. We are good. Now I'm super curious to see how these work XC7s are gonna look on the rear of this. I forgot what spec these are. They are, they are 18 by nine and a half. Where's the offset? plus 28 it looks like i don't know we'll see how it looks the front looks like it has perfect poke but obviously we need to lower it to really know for sure these work emotion stickers actually glow in the dark at this point we're ready to put it on the ground that looks crazy with wheels on it i almost forgot how the front end looks on this thing it's been so long Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. Dude, it's crazy how just putting a car on the ground with wheels absolutely changes the vibe and how it looks. What? That's insane. Gosh, I really wish that other quarter panel was here. That's such a bummer. This door cannot even latch, like, come on. It's still super crazy to see this thing on the ground again. I wonder if it'll start first try. Luckily, right before I brought it in the garage to repair it, I did an oil change on it. So at least I know the oil's good. Whoa. One of my few cars actually has a battery. Whoo, we got lights. That's a good sign. Key is still in the ignition. Oh, no neutral check. We gotta change that. A little rough, a little rough. There we go. <laughs> hey, but first try though, this sounds so quiet. Hell yeah. Man, I'm hyped. I know a lot of you guys said you really liked the wheels that this car came with. I honestly was not a fan. I like these wheels much better. I don't know if these are gonna stay on the car or not. Like I said in the last video, these are the only wheels I had with decent tires on them. But I kinda wanna pull this thing out of the garage. One, to sweep up and clean up. I love a clean workspace. And two, just to see it outside again. Can't tell that the rear left is still damaged. Or I guess rear right, depending on how you look at it. I also wanna see if the taillights work. I haven't checked that yet. I don't know if you guys remember, but we were having a weird issue with them not working before. Headlights are good. I also only plugged in one taillight, so. Yeah, still. So I'm sure you guys are wondering about the other side with the taillight. When I got the car, that taillight was crunched and in a million pieces for obvious reasons. But the guy did include these taillights. Now let me explain why these won't work. There is a difference, as you can see, this one has white in the center, and this one does not. This one also has bevels in it. This one is perfectly smooth. 
Apparently there's two different versions for the Y32. I don't know if there's more than two, but two at least. These are considered Zenki, and these came with the car. These are correct to the year of the chassis. This is a 91, and these are considered late model. Now the problem is, the plug is different. I scoured the internet, and I found some Zenki taillights. I want you guys to guess how much these cost. I bought a pair, so I have the left side and the right side. I already plugged it in. I don't know if it works yet. Both of these taillights shipped over from Japan. They were like $25 each. How is it so cheap? That does not make any sense to me. You can't buy any tail light here in America for $25. Like even the junkyards, they charge like 60 bucks for a tail light. All right, headlights are on. Around back. Still nothing. Still nothing. What the heck, dude? Let's see if the turn signals work. I forgot to even check that. Okay, that's good at least. We have something. I can at least drive with the hazards on, I guess. Let's see if the front ones work. Yeah, that sucks. This is missing. That's good. So apparently these side markers are the same exact markers they use on the JDM 300ZX fenders. Let's unwrap this tail light and throw it on the car. Also, does anyone know what this says? It's got some Japanese writing on it. These have the coolest little tabs to screw them in. It doesn't take nuts like most taillights. Unfortunately, the time has come where I need to move this car. So I'm gonna have to find a place to bring it. Maybe I'll try and squeeze it in with the 240. How are we gonna fit two cars in here? Oh man. It's crazy what organizing your parts and tools does. It frees up a lot of room. Now we gotta drive this thing back in the garage. What side should I pull the 240 in? I'm thinking probably the farther side since I'm gonna be working on the Gloria. This is more of the workshop side. I don't know. I guess we can always rearrange it before snowfall. Ah, oh, it sucks seeing this thing smashed. Wow, it looks so weird seeing it on this side. That should be plenty of space to do the last quarter panel in the Gloria. Man, I'm pretty excited to have the car here. I don't know if you guys are aware or not, but it's quite a drive to get to Omar. So every time I work on the Gloria, it's, it's significant. I gotta pack a lunch, sometimes a dinner. But it'd be nice to do it a lot closer. Back with the Gloria. All right, I need to figure out a way to keep this door closed. Not on the passenger side, but on the driver's side. Because as you guys know, there's no quarter panel on this side. So maybe I can put a bungee or a strap here and just pull it closed. I don't know. Don't want this thing to be flapping around while on the highway. Try and clean up the rest of the bits and bobs in here. I'm wondering also, should I install the bumper for the drive back? Ah. So I was thinking about leaving this quarter panel on but then I realized that's probably a bad idea because if it gets too floppy in the wind, yeah, it's only being held on right now by one vice grip. So let's just, is the tail light hugging it? It might be, we gotta take off the tail light. <laughs> one half of a quarter. Oh man. Now it looks like a parts car again. <laughs> this looks wild. Just a hanging tail light. So here's what we got going here. We use this as our base and I wrapped it around the door. And I put a towel there so it wouldn't leave an indent because I actually care about this car a little bit. I want to keep it nice. It doesn't need to be cranked down. It just needs to be tight enough where it won't open up on us. I think that'll be fine.
Now there is some level of sketch to driving this thing, but luckily we have CJ here. He's going to be following us on the way to the 240. So fear not, we have a follow car. All right, here we go. 45,000 kilometers, racking them. I have to admit, this thing is driving swell. The back glass is so clear, it looks like there isn't even a 08. Having the trim in my face wasn't the most fun, but driving this car was a thrill. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> How many people drive around with the missing quarter panel? Not many, probably for a good reason. Really wish the taillights worked. The lighting definitely brings the car to life. How to do CJ? Did we lose any parts? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> nothing flew out. <laughs> Some good photos though. Dude, I can't wait to see your photos. I hate that you go around Saying things that you know nothing about I hate that you called my phone I had been dying to feel control be the first time the Gloria comes to my house. Pretty wild to think that it's lived at Omar's house the entirety of my ownership of it. Oh, Tim's here? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, we lost it on the highway. <laughs> yeah. My weld broke off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Quite the look here. Oh, it's, uh, yep. What's going on with, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I there's no, there's no latch, so. I comprende. This is awesome. Right? It moves. It's a car. I mean, it always moved and drove like amazing. I'm just right. so excited for it to be one piece so we can go on road trips with the boys. Yes. This thing is like just the ultimate cruising machine. In style, that is. Come on now. Don't play with him. Drift wheels on the <laughs> VIP? I mean, they're not drift wheels but yeah yeah i mean i'd say so the the look is not <laughs> what it could be yeah we'll get some chrome johnnies eventually hell yeah crazy to see both cars next to each other the first time they've met and i don't have the craziest amount of room to continue this build and work on it but we're still going to find a way and get it done Shout out to CJ for filming and shooting those rollers. And a big thank you to Omar for letting me use his garage for that long. This build would not have been possible without Omar's help. And shout out to Tim for driving all the way back down to Omar's with me to get my 300ZX. And thank you to you guys for sticking around and watching yet another video. Don't forget to drop a like on the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to see more and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.